So next, Locks and Ag Tech Field Days, we've got Diane Stewart. Diane, would you like to introduce yourself, please, and, and, and what your product is today? Sure, thanks, Matt. Um, our company is called AKA Primary Solutions. Uh, we're not a startup. We're actually an agent for a New Zealand technology called Harvest Electronics. So they've been around for about 20 years. They um, have a bunch of um, cellular sensors that connect through a base station and upload data live. They can collect data from everything from a rain gauge right through to um, fire service data. We've got some work here with the fire service departments in Victoria. They run uh, signal monitoring on tracks, railway tracks in Tasmania. But I'm here today to talk a lot about the orchard and vineyard monitoring that we do. Okay. And what benefits are there from what you're doing for our orchard and vineyards around the Riverland? Sure, there's a lot of benefits with efficient resource use. So things like your irrigation water, we can monitor soil moisture, which we've seen a lot of today. We also have pump monitoring, so we can monitor pressure, water flows, um, and give you alerts on all of the uh, parameters that are monitored. So if you've got one of those leaks, you'd get a phone alert that says uh, pressure's it's not where it should be, or flow rate's not where it should be. Um, so you have that ability to improve your decision making, improve that use of time we've heard a lot about today, um, but also be very efficient with your resources. Uh, something that's worked very well in New Zealand, um, a lot of the regional councils have uh, water meters on uh, systems as well as individual offtakes from water systems and that data is uploaded automatically to the regional councils uh, for your water bills. It's also shown on screen so you can see it live when you turn your pump on. Uh, what's happening and it all tallies, it's all electronic, saves so it's one job you don't have to do now. So what would be the standout feature of your product compared to some others? Um, well we've got a pretty good range, so we can have up to two kilometres between loggers uh, back to the base station, so when you're on big properties like we typically have in Australia, you're not looking at necessarily a lot of the expensive base stations to jump the signal back. Um, so that's pretty handy, it gives you really good economies and also uh, from what I've seen we can fit the most sensors on those systems, so a much greater range of data points. The site, the uh, base stations are fully customisable and there's also a free app that's fully customised to, um, to the user. Lovely, Diane, thank you. You're welcome. Next at the Loxon Ag Tech Field Days, Mike Krause. Mike, would you like to introduce your uh, company and product that you've got here today? Yeah, my name's uh, Mike Krause. I'm CEO and founding startup, uh, Plan to Profit Agri is the name of our company. So if you're a grower and you've got questions about wanting to be on top of your financials, or you've got major questions like, do I want to buy the next door neighbour out? And we happen to have a hike in water pricing. What's that going to look like? Uh, and also doing sensitivity and risk management activities. Um, if you've, <coughs> those are the sort of act, the challenges that we've had. So we've got a cloud-based um, program that helps you model the financial outcomes of those challenges you've got to make a decision on. Um, about six years ago, I was approached by GADC. I was, no, it's not the wine industry, to write a manual on farm business management. It's actually gone to its fourth print in five years. And the principles in it are identical for horticulture. So we've grabbed that and all the different budgets that are in that and we've basically made those budgets simpler to do rather than using Excel. So how does your product differ from other finance applications that are out there? And you mentioned Excel, but how, is, how does it uh, work better than those other products? Uh, we've put a lot of effort into usability. So we appreciate, I guess the theory is if we can get growers and farmers using our platform, which are 60% of our license holders, then anyone should be able to use them. So usability and also some of the um, outputs that come from it are quite simple. With dials, you can see what your efficiency of your business is. You can see the equity levels. Uh, you can see some other bank ratios and those performances. And probably what makes us a standout from anyone else in the world is we do scenario analysis. So What's the next five years going to look for us? And if we change any of that plan, what impact it's going to have on our cash or our profitability or our balance sheet? So those three things are really important to look into. So you're looking at uh, business continuing or you're looking at succession planning or what sort of areas are you, is this focusing on specifically? Uh, all of that. Yep. And we do, I'm sorry, uh, 
some of my banners look like farming orientated. We uh, cover all agricultural industries at the moment except for dairy and pigs. So we'll do horticulture, we do dryland farming, we do pastoral. Uh, we're all over Australia in the tropics down here. So we're covering all those. And I guess what's a standout, we do a lot of training and support. Uh, with COVID, it allows us to do it more with Zoom. And I have been approached by an ag college in New South Wales to do some accredited training in the farm business management space using our platform. Mike, thank you very much. Thank you. Next at Loxton Ag Tech Field Days, Arndt, would you like to introduce yourself and what you've got here today? Yeah, g'day, I'm Arndt Enneking, I'm the owner of uh, Mobyshire Australia. We're originally a farm-based business that's gotten a little bit out of hand. Um, we started off looking for solutions that people wanted that you couldn't find. Um, so we started off with a cordless shearing handpiece like this. Um, did that, it was something I wanted for my farm. Uh, couldn't buy anywhere so we went looking and that's how the business got started. Since then we've done a lot of field days, we talk to a lot of people and people come to me looking for solutions for things and say hey can't you find me this, can't you find, can't you find me that and I really kind of like the challenge so we had for over and over people asking us for a cordless secateur initially to trim sheep's hooves um, but also now we're obviously in the horticulture game and it turns out we were the first to bring one in that was fully cordless so no cord to get tangled in you can just wear it on your hip very light and easy that was was the challenge to meet and it's it's just gone crazy but at the same time we come from a fundamental farming point of view which is i don't like having to buy a product and then two years later it's obsolete and i have to throw it in the bin and buy another one so we come from a, a point standpoint of dependability repairability so we keep all the parts we allow you to fix them yourselves you don't have to go to a authorized repairer and get charged squillions to replace something that's something that we're really passionate about so we really want people to have a product that they still own and they don't have to hand in every year to have the maintenance done just to keep the warranty yeah great so on top of that we give you a two-year warranty an honest warranty so that when things do go wrong you know we're there for you if you need parts in the middle of pruning we're at Mount Barker now they can be with you know overnight basically yeah and thanks. these are all things that I value as a farmer myself when my machines break down and that's what we try and offer other people so come and have a look um, you mentioned you, you got around to a lot of field days and developed that way but um, were, were there specific things that you wanted in your product that you knew from the outset like the repairability and those sorts of things yeah definitely so everything we take to market we test first so these products here we tested for nine months in the hardest conditions we could find before we were willing to even introduce them to anyone. Um, so we found people in, in with vineyards, I've got family in vineyards, uh, horticulture doing trees and so forth and basically gave them to them and said hey kill this and all of them didn't want to give them back afterwards so we knew we were onto a good product and from there we then went to the next step and because it's our brand, uh, we're a smallish company, we want to make sure that when you see our brand you get something that works and not something that goes in the bin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thanks so much. No worries. Next at the Loxton Ag Tech Field Days, Scott, would you like to introduce yourself and uh, what you've got here today? Yep, so, yes, yeah, so I'm Scott. Um, I provide customer support for Ceres in, in Australia, and so we, we do um, imaging and also other um, data to help people see where, where their crop's going, like in season, so we'll do... Um, so we mostly for horticulture um, and also for other irrigated crops, we'll provide um, uh, imagery and also integration with other, other sensors. So people can um, sort of, I guess, probably useful to think of it as a mini audit. So you can you look at where your crop's at and um, find areas that you can fix and then, you know, then make, it, make some changes. And then a month later, you do another image and see what, how it's fixed up and whether, whether, it's, whether what you've done has worked. So basically we provide um, a th some thermal data, we call it water stress. Uh, we provide some NDVI, uh, we which uh, growth data, which we call NDVI and chlorophyll, um, and people look at those together and, and they get a really good picture for where their crops crops at and compare it with last year and and compare it how it's going in the season. Mm. So, lots of discussion on this today in the other tent. Um, but what's the entry level here? How does it? How does someone get started with this to help develop what they're doing on farm? 
So I guess um, the first year we, we image we very often find some issues. Um, so it a matter of just looking at the image and, and then someone like myself will come out and um, either over the phone or, or in on your property and go through the image with you and help you to see things changes you could possibly make and, and we talk about different management options or whatever. Um, but then after a while you start to see the patterns in the imagery and you, you can make changes based on that. So I mean probably in a nutshell it's like what were you expecting to see there and areas so you know you're gonna have good poor and good areas and worse areas in the in the paddock but in your in your property. But using the imagery you can see if they're tracking where you expect it and, and make changes and, and highlight and just find things, find problems before they actually become a mm. Um, a loss of crop for that year. So People you've worked for previously, how has it helped them? Have you got some sort of real world examples you can give so, us? So typical things we find are um, water stress because uh, valves or irrigation infrastructure hasn't turned on properly. So you will, will very often see pressure problems um, before you can actually see it on in, in the image. You can, um, before you can see it in, in person, actually we pick up that there's the transpiration not quite working as well as it could. So that's, that's probably really typical. And then things like um, wind stress and, and buried dripper will we'll identify that. Um, and then if nutrition's not been quite right, then you'll see slight differences in our, in our growth picture, which, which people use to help them refine those things. So um, the, the good thing about our product is it's really, uh, it's a relative uh, measure that we, we have an app where we load things in. So uh, if, if there's lots of, lots of differences in the paddock, you'll see those. But then once you start to get those out, then you'll, it, you'll pick up finer, finer distinctions between um, differences so so the the better you get the more it'll show you so that's something that people find really useful excellent scott thanks so much no worries next loxton ag tech field days brad introduce yourself and uh, and ryan as well and let us know what you're doing here hi i'm brad not uh, project manager at vidivisor and this is my team member ryan tan ryan is part of the uh, the ground-based vision system uh, for the Vidi Vidivisor project. You may remember we spoke about Vidivisor as a dashboard and a ground-based vision system. This is the ground-based vision system here and Ryan's going to very quickly talk about the functionality of that. But at a higher level, this is being developed open source and we're here today because we want third-party technology organisations to start working with this uh, prototypes. The project's ending in June 22. Uh, at the end, we'll have a prototype of this ground-based vision system working and we want to engage in an open source way for companies to come harvest all part and uh, the data is included. So you can either look at the, um, uh, the data sets, the algorithms and the hardware mix and develop this as a whole product or, or to value add to your own products and services. Excellent. Ryan, do you want to take us through it? Okay, um, I'll, I'll show you guys uh, the two different products we have over here. One is, we call it the VTBox uh, 2.0. So they are pretty much a handheld uh, device um, that you can either uh, carry it throughout the farm or you can attach it onto the um, uh, a, a mule or quad bike. And then um, while, while you're doing pruning or doing something in the farm, you can still take photos of, of the um, incidental capture of the farm. And it has... Uh, high accuracy RTK GPS data up to three centimeter. So um, this will give us a uh, geospatial plus the information of the plan, um, which is really useful when we combine all the information together. Okay, so um, this again is a, is a prototype, um, but by uh, this time next year, um, it will be something really good. Um, so the, the other one uh, hanging at the back, it's, it's sort of the, um, again, it's a prototype of the, uh, we call it a tri-cam. So it has three cameras, um, uh, top, middle, and the bottom, which is facing up. Um, it, it, we, can, we can attach uh, infrared camera, uh, thermal imaging, um, uh, laser, a LiDAR in it as well. So that will um, essentially give us uh, more information, as in um, we can even detect if there's any leakage just happening in the uh, irrigation site. Um, plant area index, how healthy is the, uh, the plant. Um, so again, this this is these are all modularized units. So it will be um, really good to get some feedback from uh, growers as well as um, uh, developers over here. So at least we can um, uh, move forward and um, make it a, a better product at the end. Excellent, Ryan. I think you've summed it up beautifully. Thanks so much.
Next at Loxton Ag Tech Field Days. Andy, would you like to introduce yourself and what we're doing here? Thanks, Matt. So Andy Chambers from Airborne Logic. Uh, we obviously had a bit of a chat this morning, but the detail around what we do is uh, detailed image collection and very detailed mapping on farm. So we're using a combination of drones, a couple of little guys on the table here and the big one behind me on the banner. And those are utilised to do detailed couple of centimetre type uh, positioning across so that we know exactly where those end posts are, the corner posts, the tree or the vine itself. Uh, here on the screen we've got a copy of the vineyard that we had a look at around this morning with some of the variability uh, around nitrogen uh, in that particular vineyard block and that'll be live on the AgTech demo site. Um, so really a lot of this was driven by the request to have accurate positioning around plants so that we could do counting not only of live plants but dead ones as well. So some of the financial uh, information that this has been used for is to put together a financial budget for clearing uh, vineyards that are, are, are really riddled with Utipa, for instance. So a uh, big budget to spend across three different vineyards, can't choose which one. Okay, let's have a look and do a count and work out which one's got the least number of live trees or vines or whatever it might be. So those types of financial decisions are being made behind with this type of detail. Yeah, uh, what are some other applications and extrapolations you can do from getting this data? Yep, so um, the applications here are a, a little focused around nutrition, uh, but we also have similar layers that are showing that water stress as well, so that we can then apply those types of data sets into something like a variable rate uh, application for mulch spreading, for instance, if we're looking at how we're going to treat different parts of the soils across vineyards with um, different mulch rates to uh, retain soil more Moisture. Excellent. Andy, thank you. Thank you. Next at Loxton Ag Tech Field Days, Matthew, uh, Deep Planet, that's what we're here having a look at now. Take us through what it is. Yeah, Deep Planet is a uh, agri-tech company out of the UK with their research background out of Oxford University, um, where three founders uh, met, met each other as uh, doing their MBA and, and uh, did a water challenge independently uh, to each other and realised if they put all their smarts together they've actually got um, some really useful technology. So what they're doing is uh, monitoring and helping uh, growers and winemakers to manage uh, vineyards at scale. So it's largely bringing in satellite imagery. So other people have spoken about different ways of getting imagery. We're looking at satellite imagery and providing it on a regular weekly or daily basis so that they can make decisions uh, quite quickly and not have to rely on imagery on set time frames. Um, Importantly, they're therefore able to look at all the, the things we've already spoken about in terms of uh, vigour variability, um, stress, water, uh, but they've also got some really smart algorithms in terms of doing hands-off yield prediction, uh, as well as, as you can see on screen here, BOME heat maps. They've actually identified how they can actually measure sugar from space and organise um, what the you know where you might want to take your sampling from to actually get a truly accurate representation of the, the vineyard, um, help growers have that database decision, uh, sorry, database discussion with grower liaisons about is their, is their block ready to be picked? Can they actually split pick the box because a third of it actually is within contract and two thirds might not be. So you can say, well, let's take that third off and we'll come back in a week and pick the rest of it. So it's reducing the growers risk, um, but the winery is still getting their wines, uh, sorry, get, still getting their grapes at the quality they want for the wines that they want to produce. Okay. Um, something we've talked about is interoperability and working between other systems as well. Does this interface with other systems or can it? Is there a way it can do yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. So when, when Deep Planet originally set up their business, their whole uh, philosophy was that they were going to be just a business that delivered the, the algorithms that could do the analysis of the data. You know, you, as you can see, you can get imagery from lots of different sources where their smarts is, is actually in interpreting that data and being able to put it out. So their initial, initial plan was that they would API in and out of uh, different systems. So if you've got soil moisture sensors, they can actually take that information in, they can predict out your soil moisture for up to a month. Most growers want a week to two weeks. They can also do soil moisture interpretation so your whole uh, sub um, terrain can be mapped across the whole block rather than just getting a, a uh, rather than just getting a measurement at one particular point. Um, but unfortunately, when they started to push out their results, there was no dominant platform, as we've been talking about today. Um, so they can either deliver it through a front-end platform, they can API it into, say, a major larger winery or grower group's existing operational platform, 
Um, or as some growers who maybe want to use technology but they're not very technologically focused and they don't want to jump on a computer every day, um, the way they build their software is they actually build it as if it's like a PDF report and then once growers and through the co-creation, once growers are happy with that, then they build it onto the platform. So they can literally just email you a PDF report once a week to make it really easy. So I'm suggesting that would be the entry level if you were going to use a system like this. Yeah, I mean from an entry level, so they have um, as most software as a service, you know, monthly subscription companies do, they have a free service um, where you can get your basic imagery. Again, you know, we're not out there trying to, um, you know, create a, uh, you know, make money off of supplying imagery because that that's quite easy to get. Uh, where where you pay the the fee for the service is actually in the interpretation of the data and moving into prediction analytics. So if you take, for example, um, the BOME heat maps and so forth, that actually was a spin out from us actually predicting uh, the optimal harvest date based on a target BOME level. So Pano Ricard winemakers said to us last season, we want to know um, how much is out there, quantum of the yield. That's what we originally started discussing. And then they said the second question was, we need to know when it's ready to be picked. Because if we've got a 13 and a half BOME, uh, that's our target BOME for that Shiraz block, um, then um, if it comes in a, a BOME under, it costs us a whole heap of money to put concentrate in or whatever else, and we have to stop. We might have already booked trucks, so we have to pay for those trucks going back empty. Um, and they came back and we did a thousand hectares over multiple regions. This region uh, in, in the Riverland, Clare Valley, Langhorn Creek and Barossa, um, multiple regions, we got to an 89% accuracy on their, um, on their yield prediction at a block level and then within 0.22 of a BOME to actually measure their sugar. So 0.3 was their, their maximum range, we're in 0.22. This is one of their blocks where they've um, ground truthed it for us as well. They were very helpful in that. Um, and you know they, they estimated that it was up to $55 a tonne, just largely in logistics costs that they were getting as an ROI in terms of not having futile transport, reducing their sampling by not having to have as many sample, samples go out. The, hand, the, the yield prediction is completely hands off. The maturity prediction needs some initial samples at the early start of the season just to calibrate it. Um, and they're saving quite a lot of money. And it also brought the winemakers into a database decision on where that variability is. Can we split pick the box? Because I've got X amount, as I said before, that's in contract um, and not have to risk losing my whole block. Yeah, right. Yeah, interesting and uh, the connectivity involved in that as well. Matthew, so thank I just, you. I'll also just quietly say um, they have received a grant from the South Australian Government through the Department of, um, for Trade and Investment called the Landing Pad Program uh, and they will actually be opening up an office here in South Australia um, because they recognise the, the smarts and skills of South Australia as a community from the ecosystem that people like Ollie are, are doing, the Australian Institute of Machine Learning and the universities and so forth and with their Oxford University background they, they are coming so they will be based here as well. Next at Loxon Ag Tech Field Days. Guy, I'm going to get you to introduce, but I see the tagline, the essential tool for everything rural. It's a big claim, but I'll let you explain it. A big claim for a big company. So uh, OnSite is a digital check-in solution that helps improve operations, communications, compliance and biosecurity for farms and people visiting farms. So we work across all rural sectors. Um, we have over 36,000 users across 3,500 rural businesses. We're out in New Zealand, so I just moved here four months ago uh, to grow our presence in Australia already. The uptake's been really good. Um, our biggest sectors are orchards and vineyards, but we um, come from the dairy sector, so really uh, the need for onside came from our CEO and co-founder Ryan Higgs, who worked for Sinlay, which is one of New Zealand's largest dairy farming operations. And they struggled to know who was where in real time, what jobs they were doing, how to communicate um, health and safety information, particularly temporary stuff that would pop up overnight. And that's a um, you know requirement under legislation. So they couldn't find a visitor management on the uh, market at the time that solved this problem. So that's where it was created. So really started with check-in and, and health and safety management. Uh, but it's grown from co-development with the industries to be um, the essential tool for everything rural, so including task management, biosecurity, and that's our ultimate vision, is to create a global rural network to provide next generation biosecurity. So how is the system implemented? How does it work in that respect? It's an app on your phone um, at, at the core of it. So we're um, app first and, and super simple. We know it needs to be ridiculously simple to actually get used in the field. You can have the best back end in the world. If it's not used in the front end, then you're not really collecting data and it's not useful. So um, yeah, anyone can download the app on their phone, free to download. Um, I've mapped out the Loxton uh, site so you can check in, play around, look at the risks and stuff. Um, and you can also use QR codes kiosks, um, web chicken, you name it. We've, we've thought of all the different ways how we can 
allow people to still use the system no matter what their level of tech capability or you know whether they have a phone that can run it etc so there's a level of scalability there as well 100 percent. yeah i mean we started from individual dairy farms now our biggest customer manages over 200 orchards so it, it scales with your business um there's a there's a free version that can help with things like um, sustainable accreditation. So compliance is getting heavier and heavier these days. So, um, so like the sustainable wine growing uh, accreditation, it then requires you to do things like map your property, um, traceability, biosecurity, OHS management. Um, and so all of these things you can do through onsite, a lot of them through the free version. Um, and then the subscription's 100 bucks a, a site a month, and that will allow you to do your OHS and job tracking and things like that. Excellent. All right. Thank you so much. Next at Loxton Ag Tech Field Days, we've got John. Uh, where are you from and what's your uh, business? Uh, my name's John Pargetta. Um, I was a grower of 500 acres down at Langon Creek, so similar sort of pain points coming off the, off the river. Um, I'm now with Swan Systems. Uh, Swan Systems is a software company. Um, we're hardware independent, um, but our, I guess our specialty, as we heard in the tent next door, is dragging together all of that siloed information and data sets. So we bring in uh, weather data, irrigation uh, controller data, soil moisture probes, um, some leaf sensors. Um, so uh, all the different siloed things that every, uh, the grower has issues bringing together and looking at different platforms. So we bring it into the, the one platform. Okay, and how do you use it from there? Uh, it then has, um, as Peter mentioned on a slide there, it's, it can be very easily uh, one look at a dashboard and you can see whether the blocks you've got are in the green zone, which is obviously the good zone. Um, if it was blue, it was in the you know it's overwatered. If it was yellow, it's it's underwatered. But when you drill down further, um, you're able to uh, program seven days out. Um, we our algorithms uh, look at the uh, the forward weather conditions, and we're able to uh, then put a suggested irrigation out for seven days. Uh, we have one irrigation controller that we currently have it fully integrated so we can push the, that seven day uh, program into the, uh, the irrigation controller and we're working on the other two major ones as in Talgill Dream that's here and also the Motec ICC Pro so the two major ag uh, controllers but there will be Ga Galcon and Mate and those come yep, along yep. as well. So there's a level of um, automation going on here as well? Correct. Yeah, and yeah. it's yeah. It, it, it gives the grower that you know that one-stop shop. I guess he's got all that siloed information. He's able to look in the one place. Uh, we also integrate uh, imagery uh, from a different a number of different sources, whether it be drone, satellite. We can we can bring that in as well. Excellent, John. Thanks so much. And next at Loxton Ag Tech Field Days, Matt Cooper, you've got the product in your hand. Take us through it. I do indeed. Thanks, Matt. Um, so I work for D3 Ag, um, and we are the Australian distributor for uh, Arable um, and their flagship product, product which is the, um, the Mark II. Um, as Mark mentioned in the, in the field earlier this afternoon, um, it's, uh, it's a weather station, but we also have some crop sensing capabilities in there as well. Primarily to look around the overall water balance of, of a crop, what's coming in, what's going in, our rainfall, our reference CT, our crop ET, and a couple of other bells and whistles as well, such as looking at overall peak greenness, NDVI, and things like that. So how does it actually do that? Well, we use uh, spectroscopy. Um, so we, we measure about seven uh, different wavelengths which correspond to plant growth. We also use uh, infrared um, canopy temperature to get those measurements as well. Um, and we use very simple ratios to get those, um, those NDVI calculations, which okay. we deliver on a, on a daily basis. Yeah. So how does the data go from there to something that we can use? So we transmit um, to two places, um, a web app and a mobile app um, via cloud services. Um, and look, the data that we see um, coming from this thing in the field um, provides us with all information about obviously everything that, you know, the weather, how that, the weather drives our, our crop production. Um, we can tie things to, to growth stages and phenological stages. Um, and there's a little bit of extra capability in there to um, look at our irrigation uh, scheduling as well. 
Okay. So what have been some implementations that people have used this for to, to better their farm? Um, well, we see a lot of success in um, short season crops such as vegetables because it's very portable, it's, it's easy to move around, um, and particularly in, in, in viticulture as well. Um, so uh, it was very popular in, in the commercial uh, research space in agriculture as well. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really just a, a tool, a valuable tool that they can have in the toolkit which provides you know, all the relevant field data that, that they need to, to run their operations basically. We also have uh, the capability to plug into other systems as well. You know, for growers that might be have more of an on the boots, sort of, you know, on the ground boots approach. Um, you know, it's useful to have, you know, a series of these, th these things deployed across their operation where we can just check in, see what the local conditions are, what the forecasted conditions are, or we can scale up from that. And if we want to dive deeper, we can send our data to, to people like Swan Systems, you know, Deep Planet, um, Pear Tree Intelligence, and, and, a, and a whole range of others. So we've got great interoperability with, with um, other platforms that are out there, and um, that's where we see a lot of success as well. Excellent, Matt, thank you. No worries. thanks, Matt. Next at Loxton Ag Tech Field Days, we have Hannah from Save Ag Systems. Do you want to take us through what you're here for today? Hi, I'm Hannah, and um, we are Safe Ag Systems, um, an operational safety software for managing um, health and safety on farm and compliance. Uh, founded on the York Peninsula after um, an incident on farm, realised when they thought they were all across their safety, started asking questions. Um, regulators came in, couldn't answer them. They wanted records, procedures, maintenance, um, records and inductions. So Safe Ag Systems was born. Um, that was about five years ago. Um, since then, we've developed um, to now cover all of your sort of OH&S as well as risk assessments, um, hazard maps, task management, uh, incident reporting, chemical register. Um, so yeah, the platform's really grown a lot since then. So how does it actually work? How does it integrate within the business? So it's um, all cloud-based software with desktop and app. Um, all the workers have a login um, and they can then sort of mark themselves at work, complete all their paperwork as they need to, or not paperwork. <laughs> um, and yeah, th they can get everything on their phone. So does it work as a training system or is it uh, m after the training happens? So you can train within it. We've got checklists, which lots of people build out with a, a video at the top and a Q&A. Um, however, it's more sort of a register, so it happens, you know, as a storage for those training records. And uh, being able to show compliance on many different levels. Exactly that, yes. And um, we're bringing in um, sort of more of the compliance as it's growing because everyone wants to integrate that as well. So there will be an audit module as well in the new year so that your auditor can send you that and you can send them everything from the system you need to and then you're good to go. Excellent. Anna, thank you. Thank you. Next at Loxton Ag Tech Field Days, we have Dominic. Would you like to take us through what you're displaying here at the uh, at the field day? Sure, sir. Thank you very much. So, I'm Dominic from Greenbrain. We do a range of soil moisture monitoring equipment and weather stations, that sort of thing. Um, we try and give you the option to deploy, use whatever sensor type or sensor configurations are ideal for your particular property, whether it's gyps and blocks and soil moisture tension, as Mark was talking about earlier, um, which is what we've got demonstrated out here, or any of the commonly sold capacitance probes. We're integrating them in, sending them through to Greenbrain, which is a really simple uh, user interface to view the data. If anyone is after more complicated, more complex, fancy, predictions and services and things like that, we've got an open API that is then able to feed the data to Swan Systems, to Mana Irrigation, to Ceres Imagery, um, you name it. There's, we're even looking after all of the racetrack um, soil moisture monitoring in Victoria. Um, so we've got that API to send the data out to any other use case. Can you just explain to us how the setup is actually out in the field, how that actually works? Yeah, so there's sensors, either weather station sensors in the air or soil moisture sensors down in the ground. They tend to be cabled up to something like this, which would be a cellular logger. So it's a little solar power 
solar panel inside that little logger that powers the unit, measures the sensor, takes the reading and then connects via the CAT M1 network to the cloud where data is brought into GreenBrain and uploaded sort of in real time so the growers can see what's going on. Excellent. And the uh, the APIs that you're talking about, was that a, um, a decision from the outset to make sure it could actually work in with other systems and, and sort of push them forward? Uh, the outset was 1984, so I don't think anyone could spell API back then. Um, it was certainly a decision that I thought was quite important. Um, we, we weren't ever going to build every connection to every service in the um, in the industry what everyone sort of wants and in the formats that they wanted so the easier way to make all of that sort of flexibility available was to make the data available for everyone who's doing a very specific and a really good job at some of those those things so it was an early decision yeah but it wasn't at the outset Excellent. Yeah. Uh, Dominic thank you no problem thanks and at Loxton Ag Tech Field Days, we have Medi and a lot of equipment here. Do you want to take us through some of it and how it all works? Sure. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, I'm obviously um, representing Centec, um, South Australian-based company, um, Adelaide, established in Adelaide, actually in Riverland in Loxton. Uh, we have tens of thousands of these probes around this area, uh, in Riverland especially. Um, we're selling to more than 80 countries in the world at the moment. Um, it's not just the soil moisture, um, it's a moisture salinity as well as the temperature in a different levels, uh, calculating anywhere between 10 centimeters to 40 meters. So depending on what type of uh, um, crops or what type of industry we're working with, it goes from mining to environmental to ag and hort and, and so on. Um, we also do have a weather station, automatic weather station, that probes can um, connect to that ones as well. Uh, the back to the conversation earlier that we had in the uh, in the sessions uh, in terms of API and own ownership of the data. Ownership of data is definitely by the, the owner of, of the probe, so that's uh, that's private and personal, and they can decide so which um, integrator or irrigation controller they want to go to if they are working with one. Uh, the API is also open, and uh, we are working with a number of different irrigation controllers, let's say Swan, let's say Mate, uh, Galcon, as well as some other ones. So there's the capacity and potential you know, to, to work with. Um, in terms of uh, our uh, product, uh, they come in a number of different shapes and forms, depending on the top of the crops that uh, the, the producers uh, are planning to utilize the probes in them. We um, also have uh, the, our own telemetry, like a Centec telemetry, that's a unit that um, uh, sends all of the information to the clouds, and then uh, all of the information can be accessed to, uh, by the Eremax, which is the software um, that is available to uh, the owners of the probe or, or, the, or the consultants that are working with us. Um, no, I was just going to say, so it looks like the system is quite scalable to whatever it is, um, that whatever application we want to put it into. Oh, absolutely, yes. So in terms of scalability, so the reason that now we come up with the Bluetooth probes, which is a drill and drop, five minutes installation, easy, and then within a minute, you know, you can take it out. As soon as you put it in the, pr in the soil without uh, undisturbed, um, it the data is valid and uh, pretty much, you know, it can be used, but you know, normally you give it a week, week or two. You know, to be able to interpret that data that is coming out from the probe. Um, it doesn't need a telemetry unit, by the way. Uh, uh, so it's, it's a telemetry on its own. Well, it is sending information through to the mobile phone that you use, and then the, you can use the mobile phone as the telemetry unit, send it up to the cloud whenever you want, and normally holds about 2,100 readings. So it depends how often you know you want it. So it can be varied. So it can it can hold a lot of information in there. But it depends when you go there you know, to, to grab the information from the probes. But anyway, too much details <laughs> for now. For now, um, yeah. So in terms of um, this session, um, the API is open for the integrators, and um, we are open to work with any any irrigation controllers. We also do um, NDVI as well as the weekly forecast one week in advance forecast in terms of prediction, in terms of irrigations, what needs to be done. Um, the icing, I suppose, on top of the, the whole thing is the quality of the data that's coming out of the probes. And it is South Australian and Adelaide-based company, and we are proud of what we produce. I think you've explained it very well. Mehdi, thank you very much. Well, thank you for having us.
Hey there, everyone. Uh, very nice to be here today, even though not uh, physically. My name is uh, Yoav and I'm from Aerobotics Company. At uh, Aerobotics, we use drone technology and models to provide uh, information about uh, the performance of your crop. The information that we provide is to the tree level or to the vine level. All the, all the those tools available for any tree crop as well as vineyards. And, um, and basically the idea is to fly your uh, orchard, to get uh, those uh, maps, those reports, to take action voiced on those reports and then to refly to measure the changes over time. Uh, the entire process is very easy. We, use, uh, we work with local uh, drone pilots. They come to the property, they, 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 they fly the orchards. We get the data on the cloud, we analyze the data. We identified variation and risks in your orchards. And I come to your farm, we sit together, we go through this uh, very detailed report, which includes uh, what we identified, quantified, how many trees in each block are underperforming, how many trees are suffering from water stress, or et cetera. And we provide recommendations on how to uh, fix, how to rectify those issues. Once this uh, have been done, we refly those blocks to measure the changes over time and to make sure that we're on the right track. And the entire idea is obviously to optimize uh, yield and to reduce variation on a block level. We're not here to create a beautiful maps for you to, to put in your office, but rather to really helps you to drive and take actions based on the insights that we identify. Uh, again, don't have heaps of time today, so I'll only show you a few examples of maps that we provide. The first one is a high resolution a RGB visual of your uh, orchard, uh, which we then use to provide the tree sensors for each uh, in every block of your orchard. So you know how many trees you have, how many are missing, and that could be uh, exported into a really nice report per variety as well. The next one is uh, using a multi-spectral sensor. We provide tree health map so that you know what areas in each block are underperforming. Also, there is a tool that allows you to quantify how many trees are affected by this trend issue, how many trees uh, are, uh, are suffering from phytophthora and, and so forth. And the last one, the last thing that I will touch on today, which I want to focus a little bit more, is the water stress analysis. Basically, when the drone flies, we measure the temperature of each and every canopy in your orchard. We then apply a few models to calibrate that based on the embryo temperature and based on the actual size of each and every canopy to provide you this uh, colorful map, as you see here on the right-hand side, whereby a blue dot represents tree that transpires a, a well, so photosynthesis, and transpires a uh, well, and uh, orange and, uh, and yellow tree are trees that are a, a bit stressed in terms of, uh, of uh, irrigation. I will now uh, jump into the platform and for the last uh, minute uh, or 90 seconds that I have, I will show you uh, a few examples uh, from, from uh, one example from the platform, specifically on the irrigation side of things. So this is a citrus orchard, Northern Hemisphere. It's, this is a navel block. Uh, we've mapped this uh, orchard quite late in the season, in, in late April. This is the visual, the RGB. It looks fairly uniform. It looks a bit lighter here, but nothing too drastic. And the grower wasn't aware of any issue. Then we applied the, our models and the transpiration product provided us the, the following uh, uh, image. And you can definitely see that the midsection is uh, transpires uh, well. So three trees are in, in a good uh, water uh, status compared to the Western valve and the Eastern valve, which was the, the most uh, severe water stress as can be seen here. And you can see the distribution as well. So what we did here, long story short, uh, was to recommend the grower to flash clean the drippers. He did so three times and he also adjusted the pressure in this valve in the eastern section. And then uh, we mapped this block uh, twice and uh, I'm jumping to the last uh, mapping from, from late April, sorry, from late uh, August. Sorry, it's loading. 
uh, but you can basically see that the, the variation shrinks. It's quite hard to see when we look at, uh, at one, one map, but uh, if you look at it side by side, you can see that the variation shrinks. You can see here on the distribution, and uh, also you see that more trees are blue and less uh, orange. Uh, this block has been, has been picked already, and uh, there was a 10 tons uh, to the hectare difference between uh, this valve and to this valve. So I think that uh, comes to, to show the, the value of this product and how important it is to, to measure uh, uh, this uh, uh, irrigation uniformity distribution early in the season, as early as possible to remediate uh, those kinds of, uh, of risks and anomaly. We are now very busy doing uh, those uh, uh, mapping uh, as an uh, irrigation audit product in uh, in your area as well, citrus, uh, almond, and vineyards. So uh, if you find this uh, of interest, feel free to reach out to me and we can uh, discuss further. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Cedric Geffen. Fieldin is an ag tech startup company founded in 2013 in Israel and currently operates in the US, Australia, and Israel. Our technology, different to many other ag tech services and products, which focus primarily on the agronomics, i.e. soil, water, plants, pests, nutrients, climate, um, et cetera, et cetera. Fieldings technology and service focuses on the operational side of the business. With ever increasing farm size, the complexity of multiple sites and assets, increasing costs of input and labor, it is becoming increasingly difficult for today's grower to maintain visibility and control. This is where Fieldin steps in. We lift the veil and provide continuous visibility of the full range of equipment and the tasks on hand. Our sensors and tags are installed on all pieces of equipment relevant to the task we deliver live and offline insights into the location of that piece of equipment, how it is faring as far as efficiency of operation is concerned based on preset parameters of your choice. And we enable ongoing benchmarking of multiple operators across multiple sites. We provide the status of the completion of the tasks, alerts in the event of exceeding or falling between below preset operational requirements and deliver reports on a daily, weekly, seasonal, and activity basis. We believe that we increase profit. We know that we increase profit per acre by boosting efficiency and account accountability. And we enable the grower to take remedial action and to drive efficiency and profitability. Um, our insights are focused on continuous improvement and enable the grower to motivate and incentivize workers based on actual results and tangible measurable outcomes. By setting goals and enunciating what success actually means, it is very easy to motivate staff and team members and then hold them accountable for achieving those metrics because you've got the data. We assist growers in producing better yields by enabling them to improve the accuracy of the delivery of the task. We improve the efficacy of their activities and there in turn we have an impact on the quality of the delivery as well as the quality of the outcome. Our reporting and analysis produces results and provides our customers with a means of tracking whether or not we're adding value. These are uh, on-site, live, where possible and correctional activity can or action can be taken. Clearly, we can also identify things on the truck, for instance, uh, that people are operating at speeds that are um, outside of the instruction, we get alerts, we can correct that at the same time. All the results, um, we track them and the outcomes we track and we see the delivery and we see the outcome. So for example, on the left-hand side of your screen, you see the number of skip rows, double sprays, and speed issues fixed per 1,000 acres um, over a period of time. And we can see that during uh, this period of time, the number of um, activities that, um, that were reported was high in the beginning, and thereafter it dropped. And that uh, the conclusion for that is that um, 
clearly by tracking this and taking correctional um, measures, um, the actual eff effectiveness has improved. Now, once again, you translate that to costs and ultimately uh, you bring down the costs of what these activities are and the cost of the mistakes or the emissions or the recurring work, et cetera, et cetera. And all of that is the tangible um, outcome that is the return on investment. So what makes Fielding stand out from the crowd? Um, we do have a unique and sole focus on operations rather than agronomy. Operational efficiency is our key success factor rather than just simply GPS tracking. Uh, there are many companies that uh, provide that service. We use tracking as a means to deliver that insight into operational efficiency. We are highly flexible and customizable in the solution that we provide because the insights that we provide each grower not only is different between growers, they're different between the sites of each grower, and they also alter and change as we grow with that client. So the insights that we provide in year one will be more rudimentary than the insights that we provide in year two, et cetera, et cetera. We handhold you. We are a true SaaS model. So we are a software as a service model. We're retention, keeping you as a valued client, as someone who is deriving benefit from us on an ongoing basis is our key success factor. So our grower success manager, that is the ultimate goal to maintain you as an interested party where we can show that we are delivering value on an ongoing basis. The other differential there is that we're interested in the data. So it is in our interest to maintain the hardware and the software so that you are agnostic to that and we need to make that as seamless as possible because if we can't get the data, we can't provide that insight to you and therefore that's our responsibility. Um, at the end of the day, we provide continuous benchmarking, not only against yourself, but also against industry gold standards. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the best testimony to the results of our labor and our service are our loyal clients. And at the end of the day, we would love to be able to uh, gain you as potential interested parties. And what better than getting um, glowing uh, testimonials from some clients that are using our product. We'd love you to uh, learn more and to, to engage with us. Please give us a call and we'd be delighted to talk to you further about our technology. And I think that's about it. Now it's your time to mix and mingle around the room and enjoy the, uh, the rest of the afternoon. Uh, just a final bit of formality here, Matthew. Thank you for oh. your <laughs> help and being our MC today. It's been great. No worries. Thank you very much.